So, uh, all eyes will be on Capitol Hill tonight as the president delivers the State of the Union, and he's got a lot on his plate. Well, he does have a lot on his plate, and, and I can't wait to hear. You got the smart guys there with I you. Do. I, I do. I do. Can't wait. Can't wait to hear what what they have to say. Uh, Chris Matthews, um, <laughs> you look at these polls. I don't even pay attention to them. It's like you know, three per, three and a half percent of Americans say that Joe Biden's done something, and ninety seven percent. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but the polls are so bizarre when you look at how historic. And I even even Republicans, even Newt Gingrich would say this. Joe Biden yeah. has had historic success. Yes. Considering a 50 50 Senate, he's accomplished great things. That message is not getting out there. And I'm not just putting that all in the White House. Like, what do you do if you're Joe Biden to say, look at what we've done? And now look at what we're facing in the next two years with these insurrectionists that I got to work with. Well, he's got an audience tonight, and uh, he's got to use it. And like he's been yeah. doing it for the last three or four weeks, he's been to uh, the, the bridge across uh, from Ohio to Kentucky, uh, the Baltimore Tunnel, the Gateway uh, Tunnel, the new one, and across the Hudson. He's talking about places to put twenty to 30,000 people to work. He's talking about people, working people who don't have college degrees, they make a big point of that. They said this bridge will be built by people without college degrees. They are really trying to get back to the working class. This is a battle for union members. It's a battle for working people that didn't go to good schools or fancy schools or anything like that. And they're trying to win them back. He has to win the working class chunk of the vote. They've got to take it back. And I think that's what he's going to do. I mean, David Garth, you know, I don't know why Trump never listened to this. He's a builder. Why is he not built anything in this country? No infrastructure program, no building. David Garth in New York, the great media advisor, you know him, he said, Replace the smell of decay with the smell of construction, moving dirt, putting up buildings. The public likes that. They know all this stuff is rotting. All these uh, subway systems and bridges are falling apart. They know it has to get done. Biden's doing it. I think it's going to be a battle between building and bullying, because that's the next election, probably. It's probably going to yeah. be him against Trump, and he's going to be a bully, and he's got to say, I'm tougher than you because I'm building stuff, and you're just bullying, I think. Yeah, and... and and, and, and Michael, it is, it is a great mystery uh, for, for so many Democratic leaders why you have a Republican Party uh, whose only significant legislative accomplishment uh, during the Trump years uh, was to pass the largest tax cut for billionaires and multinational corporations. And there was tax cuts that left working class Americans behind, even further behind. Uh, so picking up on what Chris is saying, how does Biden connect to the working class voter in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, uh, that, that in Iowa, in Ohio, that continues to vote against their own economic well-being? Yeah, it's a real conundrum, Joe, but I think Biden just has to keep saying and saying, mm -hmm. we are the party that is on your side. We are the party that is passing things for you. We've capped the price of insulin at $35. We've done all this hard infrastructure. We're, get, we're getting these chip manufacturing plants back in the United States and away from China and on and on and on through the rest of the things and just say, we have done these things for you. It's a tragedy, Joe, that they couldn't do more, that they couldn't pass a bigger reconciliation bill because Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema got in the way, but they have passed what they've passed. It's significant. It's big. It does make a difference. That Washington Post poll yesterday was very confounding, uh, particularly the numbers among independents, where I think it was about 24 to 66. My, my, Michael, I, and let, let me just say this right here. John Del yeah. Volpe reached out to me after that, that poll went out. Yeah. It's, in, it's insane. If you look at the numbers in that poll, the internals in that poll, yeah. we're to believe that millennials have broken radically for Donald Trump over the last two right. years. We're, yeah. we're to believe that on the other side that senior citizens are breaking hard for Joe Biden. I'm not really sure who they polled, but that poll was skewed. I'm looking at the CBS poll that shows Biden at about 45 percent approval rating. That yeah. looks about right. But, you know, I want, I want to pick up on a piece that you wrote in The New Republic. Um, you know, Chris Matthews was talking about what those of us who grew up in politics talk about, and I think it does matter at the end of the day, the blocking and tackling. 
you know, uh, 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 the jobs, you know, worrying about jobs, figuring out how to get the infrastructure projects going to get this country uh, uh, moving again as far as transportation goes. Um, but you, you, in your latest piece, you pull out to 30,000 feet. And instead mm -hmm. of talking about the blocking and tackling, you talk about the fact, and I think a lot of Americans still know this, it's why 2022 went the way it did along with abortion, that we still have an anti-democratic uh, 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 insurrectionist squad yeah. in the Republican Party, and they're running that party right now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Joe, I sat down to write that piece and I thought I'd, I'll just write about the speech. And then I thought, no, let me just write about the actual state of the union now mm -hmm. as I see it. And so what I see is that, you know, we pulled back from the anti-democracy cliff a bit last November. All these MAGA candidates lost and all but one accepted their defeat. So that was good, but we're still not out of the woods. And the headline that you had up there refers in 21 months, of course, to the November 2024 election. And I think, you know, our democracy is still in a perilous it place un until is. then. Joe, the, uh, the big poll that got to me over the weekend was on Meet the Press, where people who, do, who don't go to college because they didn't have the financial advantage to go with the tuition and everything, mm -hmm. and they say that college hurts you. It, it is a, it's like my grandmother would talk about this stuff, you know, the communist professors and all. It has it is gotten to the point now where people who don't go to college because they didn't feel like going, they'd rather get a job, which makes sense, and make good living right away and maybe get married early. These, these guys, they now look at college as a negative force. It's woke stuff. It's the left stuff. It's communist professors. It is the, it, the, the poll numbers. It's not that people feel disadvantaged not going to college. They feel they're advantaged. And this, this is very aggressive, as you were saying, yeah. about the anti-left mentality in the country. They don't like college. They don't like academia. They don't like the professors that talk like professors on television sometimes. Yeah. They don't like them. You know, we know who they are. Mm -hmm. and, and this is something that, that Biden has got to fight. He's got to say, I'm out there creating jobs by the 20, <laughs> 30,000. Yeah, like, you guys are going Chris, to work and coming home with oh money. Boy. It's crazy. The hypocrisy is crazy. You have. And, and Willie, we talk about this all the time. Populist heroes that are Princeton boys. Populist <laughs> Holly, heroes Holly. that are Stanford boys. Populist heroes that are Harvard boys. Like you look at Josh Hawley, Mr. Populist. I mean, the guy went to Yale and Stanford. DeSantis went to what? Yale and Harvard. What? I mean, these phony populists are really going to match up are really going to match up I, I i just i just lost my train of concentration because i was just thinking oh, you got I, your I point was, was made i was just thinking do you remember when we were in alabama we were in alabama doing that special show and steve bannon gets up in alabama and he's giving a speech he goes i went to georgetown i went to georgia how right. how smart could joe scarborough be he went to the University of oh. Alabama? And yeah. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you're in Alabama. Roll tide. Like, but, but, but this, these cosmopolitan elites like Steve Bannon, these cosmopolitan elites who play populist, they're going up against a guy born in Scranton that went to University, University of Delaware. I think he's the last state school guy or the last guy not yeah. to go to an Ivy League college since Ronald Reagan. Yeah, the lefty elitist label has never Great fit point. tightly uh, with, Joe, <laughs> yeah. with Joe Biden. Also, Joe, I love, by the way, the ones who put on the corn pone accent that they must have picked up at one of the eating clubs at Oxford when they oh. go on TV. <laughs> and, well, and, well, and, but, you know, you've oh, got to no. talk about John Kennedy go, well, I just don't know the dog ain't, that dog ain't going to hunt because they're too liberal. They're elitist. <laughs> the guy went to Oxford and he voted for John Kerry. He came out and said, I'm for John Kerry. And now it's like he puts a corn cob pipe in his mouth and talks about elitist. He's an Oxford boy. Liberals. Yes. Oh, my God. And, and many many of them are. Okay, we're going to let you.